and welcome back to POV, your favorite web political commentary series. And it looks like the people at the RVZ have been listening to Eminem classics. Because guess who's back? Let's get it. Like a perfectly timed RKO, the RBZ announced the return of the Zim Dollar. And it's taken them several days to issue out the full details of the impact of the return of our beloved currency. And it's taken the banks almost a whole week to decipher what's going on. Now, with all things controversial in this country, social media has been awash with immediate reactions and analysis from prominent social media influencers, lawyers, economists, and media practitioners. But we all know you've been waiting for POV. Nah, I'm joking. The reason why is because it's still a little bit shady or foggy, to say the least, as to what is really going on. So let's try and break it down systematically. Let's start with the SI itself. Now, the SI itself is a very short document that's packed with a lot of punch. First, it says that any transaction conducted in Zimbabwe must be done purely in Zimbabwe dollars. What's the Zimbabwe dollar, you say? Well, it's simply a change of name from what we've been calling the RTGS dollar since February. So, nothing's changed much in that regard. But next, it says that all foreign currencies, like the US dollar or the rand or the pound or the Chinese yuan and so on, can no longer be, be used for almost all local transactions. So if you have Forex and you want to pay for something, <laughs> then visit your nearest bank or bureau de charge and exchange that good old good money for your local Zimbabwe dollar. And finally, existing Nostril FCA accounts remain as they were, operating as normal, except for paying local companies. So the only clear winners are international flight operators and Zimbra, who can still almost fully transact in Forex. So just like that, with a stroke of a pen, this became the overarching policy whose full effects we're still yet to see. But from what we've established so far, here's what you need to know about how the SI, new SI, affects you and your daily life. So let's start with you and me. Now, the biggest benefit to the general person is that we can stop asking for prices in various currencies or combinations. Now, we just simply walk into an establishment, there's one price, and we can decide whether or not we can afford it like a $148 salad. And now for those who receive money from friends and relatives in the diaspora, you can continue receiving that money in Forex. However, when you want to use it, make sure you change it into Zim dollars first before transacting. Because while it's not illegal to be in possession of any amount of Forex, what is illegal is trying to transact locally in Forex. Now, the biggest issue for those who are earning in US dollars, or at least partly earning in US dollars, is that companies can no longer pay employees in Forex unless they get exchange control approval. And for those traveling, the limits on physical foreign currency one can leave the country still remains as $2,000. However, travelers are encouraged to use Visa or MasterCard facilities because the banks may not have the cash to give you. So what happens to people who are renting and that had a fixed US dollar rental amount? Do they now agree on a new Zim dollar figure with their landlord? For instance, if you had previously agreed on monthly rentals of 200 US dollars, should the landlord now make it 2000 this month and then revise it month after month? Or what happens if the exchange rate goes up or it drops? See, these are the kind of conversations that might be there for rentals, but they might also be there for school fees or the doctor's office or even your local supermarket. But we'll look into that later. Now, surprisingly, the law doesn't reflect any penalty for transacting in Forex, which poses greater legal questions of contracts between one person and another. So, for example, if I borrowed 10 US bucks from you now and I want to pay you back, do I not pay you back in Zim dollars or an equivalent and at an exchange rate that's agreed? I don't know. Or do I have to pay you back $10? And if I do, what are you going to do with it? So many questions and not enough answers. But we'll look into that as the weeks go on. Let's take a look at industry. Manufacturers, wholesalers, and retailers. Now, the forex they used to collect from sales would supplement the forex they would get via the interbank or black market in order to acquire new stocks. However, now the prices in the shops have to be listed only in Zim dollars, and that's the only currency they can collect. This means that where the interbank market fails to meet their needs, they'll need to factor in the price of the forex they get 
on the black market, which means prices will most likely go up for you and me. Now, outstanding payments to suppliers that were meant to be processed through domestic Nostril FCA accounts were immediately frozen, meaning that those funds could now only be used for international payments. This presents a unique challenge as some of these guys don't or actually import their own products because of exclusive distribution agreements and various import laws. So companies can no longer just withdraw foreign cash from the bank, but have to apply for it and show genuine business need. And it's up to the bank to say yes or no. How does that make sense? Restrictions on the interbank market have been lifted, meaning that those buying, bidding and selling forex on the official market can stink their preferred rate. And for those who can afford or match those rates, they'll get the allocation. Now, industry is going to have a tough time navigating and finding price levels in the media future as, of course, improvement of forex availability on the interbank market remains to be seen. So my prediction, as we've already begun to, to see, is that there's going to be some crazy prices being charged by companies and food outlets trying to protect their stock and, of course, ensuring that they can still remain profitable. We'll report on that more later. Now, let's look at our bread and butter, tourism. As with all other service providers, tour operators, hotels and such must now also quote their prices in Zim dollars. This will most likely mean that there will be regular, if not daily reviews of accommodation and food prices. Now, tourists may still pay for their hotel bookings using their international credit or debit cards, but once they leave their hotel, they must exchange their forex for Zim dollars. Now, while the RBZ said tourists can exchange their forex for cash and local bond notes, they seem to have forgotten just how scarce these notes are. I mean, locals are being limited to 300 Zim dollars a week, which is barely enough for us. Now, what more for your holiday experience? Can you imagine tourists having to line up to get cash from the bank? <laughs> now, there are many negative administrative effects on the tourism industry caused by this policy move. Now, when a tourist comes, when they want to escape from the hustle and bustle of where they've come from, can they still enjoy their holiday destination if they now have to be in queues and try and navigate things like rates and all the other crazy economic things that we have to do on a regular basis? It's just not a good look. Now, there's a number of workarounds that can be thought of, like perhaps maybe giving people coupons or tokens that they can exchange in the area within the bank or maybe the hotel. But these are sort of things that are not factored in when you're coming up with these kind of policies. And when we're moving forward with exploring further how this is actually going to affect industries like tourism, these are the sort of ideas that we're hoping we'll be hearing from our Reserve Bank governor and not from people like us. More to come. So, in conclusion, these are some of the bases that we thought we could cover today just to give you a little bit of understanding as to what this new Zim dollar means. But we're, quite frankly, we're a little disappointed as to how it was actually introduced. You know, we would have wanted to see perhaps maybe the RBZ host a Q&A in the morning so that people would have the ability to ask all these questions with the governor who is willing to answer. We would have loved to see perhaps maybe some radio, TV and perhaps social media adverts at the ready to show us that you are really committed to educating the public about what's going on. And perhaps maybe we would have been able to have a proper information strategy again communication guys to show that you are not committed to chaos but rather committed to introducing things in a steady and compatible manner but we wait to see how this zim dollar pans out my pov just now so three weeks ago i spoke about how it was very important to introduce the zim dollar in a way that instilled confidence because without confidence Zimbos are just going to do what Zimbos do, which is wait it out to see what the new rules of the game are and play accordingly. Now, of course, this is not very productive and not conducive for actually getting us out of our problems. But what choice do we have when repeatedly and routinely we have always found ourselves on the short end of the stick? Zimbos are going to want to protect themselves. And when you have people announce that something is going to happen in nine months, and then it happens in three days, or that you recant a statement within the space of 40 minutes, this is what's going to happen. However, I remain very hopeful because this is a window of opportunity that the government has opened to present itself as a government committed to doing right by us. 
We need a Zim dollar. We need a local currency. And anyone who says otherwise is not really, really understanding the gravity of how the foreign currency system was getting out of control. However, what we need more than that is to have a system that is committed to ensuring that the people of this country are taken care of by its money. The ball is now in your court, guys. Let's see what happens now. This is Kudamangwe wishing you a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good night.